नमो तस्य भगवतो अरहतो संबुदस् नमो तस्य भगवतो अरहतो संबुदस् नमो तस्य भगवतो अरहतो संबुदस् खाएन वाचा चित्तेन पमाधीन मया कत अच्छी बंधे भूरीफन्ये तथागत खाएन वाचा चित्तेन पमादीन मया कत अच्छीदम संडिटिक अखालिक खाएन वाचा चित्तेन पमाधीन मया कत अच्छी संग सुपटिपन्न अनुतर मेडिटेशन coming into a comfortable position finding balance in the body Let us start our practice today. With radiating loving kindness. Metta. Guiding our attention towards the present. Cultivating present awareness, sati. Being aware of the body sitting here. Drawing the mind. To perceive the moment to observe without judgment Gently let us carry our attention towards all the suffering that is present in the world, near and far.
opening the mind from the man narrow perception of our own personal suffering to the perception of the suffering across Ansara. And at present, this world hunger, Grief, pain, mental suffering. physical suffering. The suffering of both the mind and the body. Near and far. at this very moment. The amount of suffering that may be present beyond our scope of experience. in the lives of people all across. May all those beings near and far suffering in states beyond their control. feeling powerless in their circumstances. May all these beings be well and happy. May they be well and happy. Well and happy. May they have the strength in mind and body.
to overcome all the encumbrances. May they be well and happy. May they be well and happy. May all beings near and far living with anger in their hearts. Tried and tested by the woes of life. Pain animosity blind may all these beings be free of hatred be free of animosity May they be free of all forms of negativity. May they cultivate love, compassion in their heart. May these beings be well and happy. Well and happy. Well and happy. My own being living in fear and insecurity near and far known and unknown May the being experience in this suffering insecurity of food, insecurity of shelter, insecurity of life itself. From the greatest of pain down to the most minute, may all these beings be well and happy. Well and happy. Well and happy. May 
May they have the strength to persevere, to find their stability of mind and body. May the conditions align accordingly. All these beings near and far to be well and happy. Free of fear and insecurity. May all beings be well and happy. Well and happy. Well and happy. All across this world, all being, moment to moment, through selfish craving, Go through a continuous cycle of Dukkha. Arising and ceasing moment to moment. Every moment causing the arising of a next. A change, a requirement, a new standard. A new adjustment. This is the nature of Dukkha Sattva. The truth of suffering. All being internal and external. All beings, including oneself. Live experience in Dukkha Satcha. May all being going through the spur of impermanent suffering. May they all be well and happy. May they have the strength to cultivate the path the seizing of the condition. With no rising, the final eradication
the ultimate eradication. of suffering, the pain, dukkha, whatever suffering experience internally, that same suffering and much, much more is present externally. Guiding your attention to experience the constant chain arising and ceasing. Condition. nature of the breath. Guiding your attention to observe the in-breath and out-breath. Accepting the breath for whatever it might be. Gently. Gently. Observe. Observe the arising, ceasing. In breath and out breath. Moment to moment, the mind and the body calming, (laughs) 
more into the present. Let us allow the mind to observe the Kanika Pachupana. The momentary rising of the breath. Letting go of each breath as it arises and ceases. Acknowledge the peace and tranquility of the moment. When one just notes and observes without getting involved, this natural process of the breath. The impermanence of it all. Observe, observe, observe. Gently looking upon each moment with the essence of loving kindness. Whatever that arises and ceases. Acceptance and note the nature of impermanent in each rising and passing. Closely observe letting go of the breath as it sees it. Observing without craving.
gently. Gently. Guiding one's attention to observe the whole body of the breath. Pada titi bangga. Upada titi bangga. Gently. Upad Titi Bang Observe in the moment. Letting go of all the stories coming deeper into the present. Just as the breath is impermanent, all sankara of this moment the element, all five aggregates. are impermanent is Dukkha non-self Anicca Dukkha 
그 아나트 없어 없어 
the subtle breath that may persist for a very short moment. As the Sankara reduce through letting go these vibrations all across. The Vedana guiding your attention towards the Vedana of the breath. the sensation manifesting as subtle vibrations Arising and ceasing with Sati. Observe. Observe.
as you observe the nature of impermanence, of the sensation of the eye element. Observing the rising and passing away. Upad Vaya. Observing the change. Viparinama. The momentariness. Bhava Kalika. Observing. that the phenomena denies permanence. Shows at impermanence. Nietzsche Patik Keeper. All Dhamma, all Sankata Dhamma, conditioned phenomena, is impermanent. Anicca. Vata Sankara When a Dhamma rises it comes to pass away not the very moment of arising and the moment the Dhamma completely sees it. Moment to moment adverting, adverting.
the more the one sees the three characteristics in conditioned phenomena. The more one loses interest in conditioned phenomena. Observe this nature of Anicca Dukkha Nathya within this very moment with the Vedana of the breath. Like all Vedana, observe, observe.
gently. Let us guide our attention to now recollect the aspects of the meditation practice. Sweeping through this session of practice. Recollecting the area of success, the areas for improvement, the quality of sati, prajna, vizya. The indriyas in this present. Gently Gently Observe Gently. Guiding your attention. Towards your environment. body, the posture, with a deep sense of gratitude towards the practice. When you are ready, Sandu, Sandu, Sandu.
<clears throat> All right, everyone. <clears throat> So when we observe impermanent suffering and thereby non-self, we are going over, or if we are taking the approach through the Four Noble Truths, which is in seeing what is suffering or Dukkha Satya, and the cause of that suffering, which is the craving that arises, it is these two, the first two, the first noble truth and the second noble truth, that a meditator would essentially focus one's practice upon. In seeing the moment of arising, processing and seizing Uppada, Titi, Panga of any phenomena, not only the breath, but any phenomena. This phenomena can be any part of the five aggregates. So when we see the Uppada, Titi, Panga or observe the Uppada, Titi, Panga of the breath, we come to experience not just what we have learned, but we come to experience through our bhavana, meditational experience, we come to see the very moment that this phenomena arises and ceases. Now, this is somewhat like if you see a person, if you know a person, a big part of knowing that person may also be to see the image of that person, the mind and the body. Then you see the person there completely. Without seeing the person, then you don't know the person. Without experiencing the person, you don't know the person. The breath, just like the person is a phenomena on its own, the breath, just like that person, if you don't see the breath, you don't know the breath. If you don't see the arising moment of the breath, then how, what is this body of the breath? Just like the body of the person. What is the body of the breath? The body of the breath is fulfilled by the moment of that breath's arising, processing and ceasing. That culminates the moment the breath exists. That particular breath. It is those breaths that we put together in our mind and we compile ideas about what the breath could be and how the breath is and what not. When we see the breath truly, there we have the potential, the ability of seeing now the true nature of it. In the same way, when Vedana and Upasana, when we observe sensations, when we see the moment the sensation arises, the sensation processes and the sensation ceases, there we see the full sensation. So we are not deceived by the sensation. We know where the sensation arises. We know where the sensation ceases. Now, this might seem like a simple exercise, However, through practice, we know how much of balancing it requires, how much balancing is required to be with the moment of arising, processing and ceasing, to be able to see something for what it truly is at that very moment. When seeing, when something, in order to now see impermanence, 
the first foundation for that is to see the reality for what it is. So the question then comes, how do you see reality for what it is? You see reality for what it is through the moment of arising, processing and ceasing. Through Pada Titi Banga. Through Pada Titi Banga, we come to then be able to see the aspects of how this origin of suffering is no is realized in this very moment is realized by a person here whether one uses chintamaya jnana or sutamaya jnana right it always has to be realized through bhavana jnana Chintamaya Jnana and Sutamaya Jnana, when one lets go, then both that Chintamaya and Sutamaya is let go of. Why we put it into complete Bhavanamaya? Hmm? Complete Bhavanamaya. When the Sutamaya and the Chintamaya might be working in the mind, that is Sutamaya, Chinta. I'm sorry, I'm, I should explain. Chintamaya is what? Chintamaya is the um, analytical knowledge, isn't it? Hmm? Chintamaya. The Suttamaya is the theoretical knowledge. And Bhavanamaya is the empirical knowledge. Hmm? That we realize what the craving is, which is the origin of this suffering. So both the Sutamaya and Chintamaya that we that works in our mind, isn't it? That works in our mind, the Sutamaya and the Chintamaya, the analytical knowledge and the theoretical knowledge that we have, both have to go on, has to be let go on off, where we are able to see the Dhamma through the Bhavanamaya. So all of these in all of these things that we talk about in the Sunday classes, in all of our other classes, they're not really meant to be instructions um, to the practice, but more um, criteria. Hmm? More criteria. Because in the practice, if Suttamaya and Chintamaya is not there, only Bhavanamaya, then what we are observing these criteria fall or come into place to allow us to completely experience an object for what it is. Completely experience an object for what it is without the inference of, let us say, ditti uh, views, without the inference of, let us say, mana, let us say without the inference of any other self being a portion towards his Dhamma or the object being taken through the scope of self, that is through lobe. To stop, how do we stop that? It is through constant letting go, constant letting go, and whenever Whenever we find that there is the chintamaya, the knowledge, the analytical knowledge that is coming in at that particular moment, we, in the samadhi practice, we know anyways it is all about ekhagrata. In the vipassana practice, we have to realize how we balance this by letting go of unnecessary thoughts uh, that try to come up to understand the object and stick to the very basic of the Buddha's teachings, which is the Satipatthana or the Anapana Satisutra, where the Buddha offers this, this advice on how to note that present, how to note that present. In that noting, in that noting, when it comes to seeing of impermanence, for example, the seeing of impermanence. The seeing of impermanence, when a meditator, when a meditator sees 
the arising and ceasing, one ceasing permanence. The second, when one sees the nature of change, one sees impermanence. Hmm? The nature of change, viparinam, one sees impermanence. When one sees, when one sees that in this arising, and seizing that occurs, that it completely, as you continue to observe the Upadriti Banga, Upadriti Banga, Upadriti Banga, it completely, that understanding completely banishes the thought of permanence. The thought of permanence that could arise there. In such a manner, you see impermanence. In such a manner, too, you see impermanence there. All of that impermanence is then observed during that observation of the breath, the whole body of the breath. But however, the impermanence of the breath begins far before that. However, our observation of impermanent particularly starts at that moment of the body of the breath. Even when the short breath, the long breath becomes a short breath or the gross breath becomes the long breath, here too you can see impermanence. Even when the gross <clears throat> the grossness of the breath sheds, calming the breath later on, there too you can see impermanence. However, in the early stages, we do not focus on impermanence, but more upon the lines of establishing sati over the breath. Now, do we have any questions that anyone would like to ask? <clears throat> No questions. Hmm? All right. So then, so then maybe I will ask some question. Hmm? Now, we haven't discussed how your meditation has been as well, because I have been ill as well. And uh, we've not been meeting that much often. So, Anoma, would you like to um, start by sharing your experiences with your practice? Thank you, Bhante. Uh, you mean today's practice or my gentle practice? Api, the... Adhi, Adhi, Adhi. Oh. Adhi. Uh, Bhante. Uh, other, pra other karpu practice ke Bhante, um, I was able to focus. Uh, experience but I know that I I'm not breathing, but I in in general bante generally daily i do uh, morning and evening sessions and uh, mostly one hour uh, sitting meditation and bante mama it can be I mean, but I find it a bit difficult, Bante. Uh, Dhamma, I find it a bit difficult. Sita Sita Dakinoa Kinekamatak Amaru Bante. 
Mm. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm trying, but I get confused at one point. Uh, mate, uh, mate bante, might come out from myself and as if I'm watching from outside. Myself. So how do you first observe? What do you mean by how how do you now in the mind watching the mind? Mm -hmm. How do you go there? How how do you observe the mind? I observe the mind, Bante. Then, ah, the kaya no pasana kar no anam Bante. Kaya no pasana kar la. Ah, itaning mama balanoa me mind decking balanoa isle ek me mulkaya ma. It passes gradually. I look at the mind, the thoughts that are coming into the mind. So sometimes um, I think I am trying to suppress can inner thoughts. Mm -hmm. I keep watching, but mm -hmm. there are times that uh, some thoughts I want to get rid of those thoughts. It took the tamay mang out yani bante. Then I had to restart again bante. Ikhme be nawa. I think it it I find it a bit difficult. It's a matter of bante. Kahanda tono una pohme do karani kila. Sometimes I give it up also. I don't know bante with that. So so Anuma now when before you come to the third tetrad, yeah, come past the second. So how is the second tetrad? The Vedana. The Vedana. Oh, Vedana is. I can't say excellent, but but Vedana is I'm very comfortable with Vedana, but Vedana ek mat hundo ko the daaki na wa ek 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 anitya thave hundtte me menhe me na banti ke Vedana ve then apni hito mo baadhi vela inna ko ta hari Vedana wa nikang dani ne me na banti ko thima meditation karna ko ta I mean we used to have Vedana sometime back no banti hari ek me ek monakat ne banti and Nothing at all. It is ek hi na thamma. I just went to the other step, but I'm watching my thoughts. But there are days that I can manage very well. But then I'm disturbance or something like that. So that I find it a bit difficult to settle. Bante thena. The kotha I totally give it up. I don't know. Ekhala mama apu ekko me samate tegihle ekkena na etna vedena nu pasna karno ehme karno bante. Okay, etna etna nu ma now when you go on to the chetano pasna from the vedana. Yes. So the technique through which you know you you take yourself there. Hmm. Me. When you are observing a Vedana, you are now observing the Vedana skanda. Hmm? Yes. When you are perceiving the Vedanas, there you see the Sanya skanda. Mm -hmm. When you are perceiving the Vedanas, in which you are perceiving the Sanya skanda. Oh, yeah. Sanya skanda. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Vedana, if you are not feeling anything, it is the same way to be a Vedana. Ah, yes, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. उपेक्षा Uh -huh. The blandness of that nothing. I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. When you say I don't feel anything, mm -hmm. there is a still a vedana there, because anoma basics mm -hmm. of our abhidhamma that we are learning yeah. is that the chitta has two counterparts that it cannot arise without. Right? What is that? Vedana and sam. Right. If chitta is there, there is vedana. Then oya pointe kamate karan nipa vedana no pasna. Huh? When there is nothing, when there is no vedana, you have to contemplate that no vedana as upekka vedana. Ah ah, you have to contemplate on that, Bhante. Yes. Ah, vedana netang I just wait. Vedana ne feeling no. Vedana mak ne have in the behani. 
වේදනාවක් නැහැ වෙන්න බෑ if your if your mind is rolling on there is no moment that you can say that there is no vedana right? yes so then oh. that is where you contemplate when you think that there is no vedana then oya boruwa te thing oya boruwa tikak duwanawa eda passe when you realize me kata yatharthe mekat vedanawak kiyen eka now anoma hitanna me there is silence <clears throat> yes eka paratama api kiyemu eka paratama me me sabdayak sabdayak tibba එක පාට් ලයිට් ගියා කියමු ලයිට් ගියා ශබ්දෙ නැති වුණා ද ලයිට්ස් වෙන්ට් ද මියුසික් වෙන්ට් ඕෆ් ඕ ද වෙන්ට් ඕෆ් ඇන්ඩ් නව් දේ ඉස් සයිලන්ස් රයිට් නව් යු ථින්ක් ඉට් සයිලන්ස් වි වෝල් ටු දිස් ඇන්ඩ් වෙන් යු ආ විත් ද සයිලන්ස් නව් යු ෆීල් දට දේ ඉස් අ හම් ඉන් ද සයිලන්ස් යස් අ sometimes you get echo so no one there okay echo so yeah so now now the silence you see just like that now first mm-hmm. you think that there is no vedana like the silence for example mm-hmm. and then when you get a custom in the year um um uh, how can i say aligns to this or what not mm-hmm. the year starts picking up different other forms of sound that we wouldn't hear Mm. Yes, yeah. right in that same manner ara vedanawa nahe kiyala me okarama etana you realize no there is a vedana here but that vedana is upekka vedana yes the blandness mm-hmm. when you observe so that is the last end of that uh, last end of that vedana observance bante mm-hmm. sorry bante now upekka when you come to upekka bante eka kohomada contemplate karanna bante upekka ंग of pleasant sensations yes unpleasant sensations and then upekha uh, equanimous sensations then vedana you know fully then vedana you know fully yes, Now, yes. when the grossness of the mind disappears sukha a grossness of the mind disappears domanasa vedana may disappear mm-hmm. right domanasa vedana might disappear. oh oh yeah and then the somanasa might be present the somanasa vedana um inadvertently will also also disappears bhante yes and then the small subtle will be the remaining the upekha mm-hmm. vedana Hmm? Mm-hmm. the upekha vedana when you see the upadat tipanga upekha vedana that is where your vedana anupasana will become strongest right thank you right that. now because without this anoma that is mm-hmm. why without this that is why the chitta anupasana is going mm-hmm. off balance because when the chitta anupasana uh, for the chitta anupasana to be strong you have to be able to control your reaction to the vedana fully well we won't say fully eh yeah, but yeah well, mm-hmm. huh? well right yeah, well because mm-hmm. yeah, because if you don't know the the triad which is somana sadomana supekha if you are unaware of them if you're not if you've not fully seen the rising process seizing of all three of them mm-hmm. now still ara wawa guna tan danna puluwa mm Uh, yeah, yeah, still you you can be fooled mm, fooled yeah yeah fooled by what fooled by the vedana itself because then the uh, clinging arises the craving arises yes. right the craving now for example let us say that me upeksha vage na me you this feeling that you experience where you feel like there is no vedana see mm-hmm. right now no vedana 
let us say you take that as uh, emptiness at that point. Yes. But mm -hmm. now you realize, no, that's not emptiness. That is just upekha vedana there. Yeah. You see, you're still gullible in that extent. Not in mm -hmm. a bad way, Anoma. Yeah, but, yeah. Manasa, because we have not seen, we are still gullible to that fact. When we see, we are not, we are no longer gullible to that fact. Okay. That this is also Vedana. Now this Upekha Vedana also has a rising processing in a season. When yes. you are able to observe that, then the mind comes into a stable position where the mind is able to observe the mind. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Where the mind is able to observe the mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you come to Upekha and I don't practice like Upadadit Bangon. Upekha, Onitun, Upekha, just move on to Chitta. This is what I've been doing. Right yeah, now. treat it just now. Even when we are observing the Somanasa, the Domanasa, between the Somanasa, you will find Upekha, the blandness. Yes. But right? Mm -hmm. Even right now, Anoma, as you are focused on what I am saying, you have a blandness, let us say, in parts of your body, which you are mm -hmm. not focusing on right now. That is not the fact that there is no Vedana. That's a blandness. Mm -hmm. When the mind, the moment the mind goes to your limbs, your legs or whatnot, and you see and you think there is no Vedana, but that itself is Upekha Vedana. Hmm. That itself is Upekha Vedana. Yes. Okay. Hmm? Because that is Upekha Vedana, that also has a rising processing ceasing. Mm -hmm. But seeing that arising processing, to see that arising processing ceasing, that type of subtlety, you have to come through that uh, Somanasa, Domanasa, and then to the Upekha. Upekha. Yeah. Hmm? Then, when you are able to do this, now Vedana you have realized. Now Vedana has a connection with mind. Hmm? Mm -hmm. See, when you thought that there was no Vedana, how did the mind react to that? Huh? When there is a Somanasa Vedana, how does the mind react to that? When there is a Domanasa Vedana, how does the mind react to that? Uh -huh. yes, hmm? Now, mm -hmm. through the Vedana, you can connect to the mind Spectrum. through the Vedana. Mm. That yeah. is how then the mind to go on to Chittanupasana, when you go through the Vedana, okay. when you go through the Vedana into the Chittanupasana, at that moment you realize you realize or find you learn the ability of solidifying your position, let us say. In a manner where you know exactly where your fort is to observe the consciousness. Mm -hmm. You can't observe the consciousness. It's it can be quite difficult to observe the consciousness without that aspect of upekha. Because that because if upekha is not strong. When the mind has a certain hindrance coming up or a thought coming up, then you will go with the thought far more easily. Because mind yeah. observing the mind, it's not a mind and body, it's mind and mind. Mind is, man. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So easy it will get sort of clung on to or grappled. That is why coming with that upekha experience is quite important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, but sometimes you get carried away, you know, with that thought and then you try to suppress it or, you know, get yeah. away from it and struggles and, you know, that's difficult. So now I Absolutely. understand. Absolutely. So the more, the more that we observe, let us say, Somanasa Vedana, mm. Anoma, the more that we observe, Anoma and everyone else, the more that we observe, let us say, Somanasa, if you have this thought that arises in your mind to say, ah, now... Let us say, I mean, this is how a Somanasa Vedana is. Huh? This is how Somanasa is. Again, putting on or creating a ditti there, that is not what it should be. Or let us say, we learn what Upeka is or Somanasa is and we apply it. That is not what needs to be done. 
again, these teachings are not instructions particularly, but they are just, they are to be criteria, right? When there is no clinging, what will happen is there will be no proliferating. Hmm? Mm. There is a story in the Attakatha. Um, a monk is looking for an arms bowl. Hmm? Now, the monk may, um, a devotee is bringing an arms bowl for this monk, right? Uh, now, the monk is excited for the arms bowl. When he gets the arms bowl, he inspects the arms bowl. And he realizes there are three holes in the arms bowl. The monk is no longer interested in the arms bowl. Just so, one observes the reality of phenomena and inspects this nature of the phenomena. What is, how do we inspect the nature of the phenomena? Upada titi bhanga. That mm. is where we observe it closely. The more that we observe, we realize that this is a kyanni. It arises and ceases. Because it arises and ceases, it will never remain the same. It is conditioned by so many factors. It is viparinama dhamma. Change occurs. Patangate mohote ina viparinama siddhamuni. This existence itself betrays permanence, betrays permanence. There is nothing permanent about it, right? When these factors are realized, realized, now we have read these, we have learned these, but that can't come. When these are realized, you go forward. So, ah, keenness or dedication and genuine authenticity through which we walk this path, we let go to such an extent we are, where we empty our minds and just be with the nature of the object that is at that moment without creating any further sankharas upon it, without mm. creating any further sankharas upon it. The more that you see the nature of impermanence in those dhammas, you will have the foundations to see the nature of suffering in those dhammas. When you do see these natures, Vanicha, Dukkha and Anatta, the lesser you will be interested in them. Hmm? Interested in them. right? So to say these objects, the control that they have over all, the the potential that these objects could be used to control you, they become lesser and lesser and lesser because you don't have that interest in these objects anymore. Why you've seen the real nature in them. To see the real nature in them, the mind needs to be able to balance itself within that moment of upadriti bhanga, upadriti bhanga, upadriti bhanga. Mm -hmm. Without that sense of balance with the Upadriti Bhanga, at least, Pao Siyadu says, at least 30 minutes. A Upadriti Bhanga tekkama inna pulang vinnone adugaanima minitu tiyak. Minimum. Where the mind has enough time to be seasoned in it and to stabilize that sense of one-pointedness, ekagratha, upon that object, ekagrata upon the object. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, thank we you, have, Bhante. Very clearly any... explained. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Anoma. May any other questions? Bhante, one, one small question. Oh. On another occasion, mm -hmm. uh, can we do Chitta uh, Anupasana also, Bhante, meditation? Not on another occasion, another day. Mm -hmm. On, a, on another day, yes, we can. Yes, yes, Bhante, please. Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. We can do a guided. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Bhante. <laughs>
Ape Pavakal Dimni. Who would like to share the experience? Kindly ask a little question. Oh, Hirantikiana. Vedana and Pasana, then Kakata stuck the line. And if you are in very Sukha Vedana, oh. how do you proceed to the next step? Sure. So Sukha Vedana, Hiranti, think about, think about me, me. If you if you start working in a candy store, right, mm -hmm. or a candy shop or something, and you have this allowance of you know, me putting some candy in your mouth throughout the day, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you you know you now this is your first day at work. You know you're quite excited to be around all of this candy, and. Um, you do take uh, uh, privileges and uh, taste the candy a bit. It was then making karana. You will do this a couple of days. And then uh, at some point, uh, you will, uh, you know, that whole hype might go away. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Mm -hmm. hopefully that whole hype might go away and you might not want to be tasting every candy that you handle, right? Even a kang, ek, e tanata in bhavana yogiya, the meditator, when they are experiencing sukha, right? Initially you experience sukha. Initially meaning that organic um, change has to occur within you hmm? oh. if if once now let us say this person who is meditating is very uh, strong in their values and in their conviction towards the realization of the buddha's path huh? uh, so very very much wanting to realize nibbana or uh, realize the higher states of vipassana uh, like that and because of this let us say because of this deep sort of uh, dhammic motivation that this person has or faith in the path for some persons when the sukha arises uh, the sukha it arises full blown or it matures and goes through those aspects but this person does not get attached. Why? Because of the strong Dhamma element within this person. Experiences it, but does not cling on to the, the pleasant Sapa that arises during the meditation, the Sukha. For such a person, letting go of that sukha and going on to contemplating, let us say, the impermanent suffering non-self of that sukha itself becomes far more easy. Hmm? For another person who clings to this sukha, hmm? for another person who is delighted by the arising of this vibrant sukha, for such a person... This person has to take special, um, make special efforts to see the nature of impermanence of this sukha that arises, of this sukha that arises. Mm -hmm. In seeing, let us say, the impermanence of that sukha that arises, let us say you could also use techniques like, for example, if the sukha at this stage is so strong and brilliant, then how would the sukha of the other future states of vipassana, the deeper states of vipassana, how would that be? So then, because of our mind and the way that our minds want the best, we come from that sukha, we come out from that sukha, and we continue on our path. Hmm? 
somehow we have to bring our minds to see the nature of anicca dukkha anatta even in that sukha hmm? mm-hmm. even in that if you feel that you're stuck in it right if you feel that you're stuck in it but looking at the sukha with a sense of upekkha also comes to benefit the yogi huh? so there are multiple techniques that could be used hiranti to overcome that state hmm? to overcome that state okay yeah so one can do one of those three methods and try and get out of it it is simply in seeing that the sukha itself Mm-hmm. just like we saw that the anapana sati the breath or the vedana that it arises and ceases it is momentary in nature hmm? mm-hmm. it is momentary in nature and it is also conditioned by so many other factors huh? and it is opposing permanence in those same natures hiranti is seen within this sukha as well because this sukha also has a danger a trap it is because now because of this sukha you, if you're saying me sapa hinda dammam hira vela inne what does that tell you mm-hmm. huh? mm-hmm. that itself is the teaching hmm? that itself is the teaching utukuta e sapeta thiyena ara alumkar swabhavaya inne eka api attarinna ona huh? utukuta apita sapeda vadagath nattam vimukheda vadagath සැපය වැදගත් කියලා හිතපු හින්දා නේද මෙච්චර තා අපිට වෙච්ච අගර වැද්දි ටික ඔක්කොම සිද්ධ වුණේ නේද සැපය පිට පාස් ඉදුවද නේද ඉතින් මේ වගේ ධර්ම විතර්ක ඒ අවස්ථාවේ අපිට භාවනා අවස්ථාවේ ගෙනල්ලා හිරන්ති එන්නේ මේ සුඛයට තියෙන ඇලීම අපි එන්නේ තින ටික 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 අත්තර ගන්න උත්සාහවත් වෙනවා उपेक्षा sapa or the somana so the peace that you are experiencing hmm? yeah you can even use that during your daily life as well when there are things which your mind gets carried away absolutely <laughs> oh you oh you mante teransanna teransanna me anyone else who would like to uh oh yes k And this is Kushlani Bante. Oh, Kushlani. Kiana Kushlani. Hi, Bante. Uh, can you explain a little bit the, the, the whole breath, body of the whole breath? I'm a little bit, I'm not experiencing that, so I'm a little bit stuck there. Mm-hmm. The whole body of the breath is Kushlani, the moment that the breath starts, processes, and then ends. subsequently so do you still concentrate on the near the nose you still you're still focusing on the place that the breath that touches mm-hmm. right is that so so you're still from the beginning of the anapana sati so today the way that we went we uh, because we started with metta uh, the way that we progress was a little bit different and the way that we would traditionally progress which is kushlani we start with the gross breath uh, the long breath the gross breath yes the breath calms down then it becomes a long breath isn't it usmarala digase apita penna patan gannawa and then the long breath then etana calm down vela ka ketti usmarala bawata pat wenawa ketti usmarala bawata pat wenawa e ketti usmarala tawat from there the short breath comes down even more where we are able to see uh um the whole body of the breath that is where 
we are able to track, we are able to note, pick up on the very moment the breath arises on to the time that it sees us. Hmm? Okay. In the A, Tuna, those three moments of the breath. Now, one breath can be seen in three moments of it from its moment of arising on to seizing. So, the whole body of the breath, that body of the breath, knowing of that body of the breath, allows the meditator to see the true nature of the breath. There. You come from the gross breath, subtle, letting go, letting go, long breath, then that comes into the short breath, that becomes, or that brings us into a state where being with the short breath brings us to a state where we are able to see the breath through the three moments, upa, the titipanga, of its arising or to ceasing. That Kushlani. Okay, thank you, Bante. Is the, does that is that clear, Kushlani? Yeah, yeah, it is clear. Be, be, uh, I am able to come to the short breath, and I think now I understand uh, what you're saying. We we did this at the retreat as well, Kushlani, neither. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. So. Ne? Okay. Thank you, Bante. Terwan Saranai. Terwan Saranai. Any other questions that anyone would like to ask before we wrap up today's uh, session? All right, everyone. So if there are no more questions for today, then uh, all the very best to everyone. And uh, I will leave you for today. Teruan Sarnai to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.